I have a confession. I have more TVs in my apartment than I actually need. One is extra large and makes me feel like I have my own personal movie theater. I have two of Samsung's The Frame, one in my bedroom, which I love so much because it blends so well with my decor. I have an older model, which I've converted to a hanging piece of art by my entryway. And then there's whatever TV I'm reviewing, which today is the 65 inch Samsung Neo QLED 4K QN90C which supposedly is the best TV when it comes to brightness, color reproduction, wide viewing angles, and even gaming. But does it really live up to those claims? Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker. And over the last decade, I've made it my job to show people around the world that tech can be easy, fun, and exciting. On this channel, I give you special access to the products I review, the events I attend, and all the interesting people I get to meet along the way. So if you're shopping for a new TV this Prime Day, give me a like and subscribe, and I'll help you find the right TV to match your needs. This is our Samsung Neo QLED QN90C review. This video features the Samsung Neo QLED QN90C, which is one of the higher end models in Samsung's 4K Neo QLED line, which gives a good balance between the deeper blacks of OLED and the brightness that QLED is known for. The model I'm featuring in this video is 65 inches, but it's available in as small as 43 and as large as 98. If I could describe the Samsung QN90C in one word, it would be stunningly space saving. At just 1.1 inches thin, it's super slim. It's bezels too, so minimal. There's not even enough space for Samsung to put branding on it, except here. And my favorite, the aluminum stand is right smack in the middle. Samsung calls it the sharp neck hexagon. You see, I live in New York, so obviously I'm renting a small apartment, so I cannot afford furniture that's oversized. So far, the TVs I've reviewed in the past come with two feet that you attach to both ends of the TV. Almost always, the feet of these TVs are at the edge of whatever furniture I put them on. So much so that because I shoot a lot of TV reviews, I've had to look for furniture that can accommodate these wider feet. This kind of stand is a good compromise. Not to mention, I like the way it looks. It's like I have a big computer display in my living room. Of course, to save even more space, it's compatible with Beza wall mounts too or you can order a third party wall mount off of Amazon. And I think this is the way to go because it's super slim design will look great flushed against a wall. I love the bundled remote too. It's small and easy to use. For reference, this is what older Samsung remotes look like. Mine came with dedicated buttons for Samsung TV+, Netflix, Disney+, and Amazon Prime Video. But the best part is that it does not require batteries. You see, when you flip it on its back, you'll find solar cells, and it's rechargeable in two ways. The solar cell uses ambient lighting to charge the device, but there's also a USB-C port in case you want a quicker top up. I've actually had the 2021 Samsung The Frame for about two years now, and I've still never had to charge the remote. Speaking of, if you're looking for a TV that can blend with your decor, you might want to check out the frame instead. I'll link to my review up here and as well as the description box below. Because it comes with Samsung's One Connect box, all the cables disappear. All you're left with is one transparent fiber optic cable, which you can also tuck away behind a wall, which is what I did. On the QN90C, you're bound to see exposed cables, which can kind of take away from the immersive experience. The good news is there's an ample amount of ports to choose from. Two USB-A, four HDMI 2.1 ports, which means support for 4K at 120 Hz refresh rate. One of those ports has eARC support for connecting to a soundbar. If you have multiple gaming consoles like a PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, it's also worth pointing out that while TVs these days come with about four HDMI ports, 
not every single port has HDMI 2.1. It's also got a digital optical socket, an ethernet port, and aerial posts for the screen's twin tuners. During my review, I had my Switch plugged in, as well as an Apple TV 4K. That's because while Samsung TVs have great picture quality, its user interface is another story. It's not bad, just not to my liking. Before I talk about Samsung's smart TV interface, one way I've leveled up my viewing experience is with the Govi Invisual TV Backlight T2. This video's sponsor. The kit comes with a strip light that you stick behind your TV. What sets it apart from others is that it comes with a dual camera system too. It's got Govi's patented Invisual technology, which reduces visual distortion. And because it's got two cameras instead of one, the screen area covered by the camera is bigger and the colors are more accurate. The camera sits perpendicular on top of the screen, like so. It's designed to work with ultra-thin TVs. Once everything is set up and connected, it picks up and matches the colors of what's playing on the TV. And it works with any TV content. So whether you're catching up on new episodes of Hulu's The Bear, watching Raya and the Last Dragon, or just browsing the menu, the viewing experience becomes a lot more immersive. It's as if the content you're watching extends beyond the screen. If you want a dynamic viewing experience on your TV, you'd want Govi's Invisual T2. It currently retails for $139, but this Prime Day, you can get it for $89.99. I'll put all the links in the description box below, and we'd like to thank Govi for sponsoring this video. I've used Samsung TVs for many years now, and almost always I've had them hooked up to an Apple TV. Apple's tvOS is just more user-friendly, and the animations are buttery smooth. Not everyone has an Apple TV though, so let me walk you through Tizen OS. When you first turn on the TV, it looks like this. There's a large ad front and center. Your apps show up underneath as a row of rather small icons. And underneath that, in larger tiles, are suggested channels from Samsung TV+. Plus. Samsung TV Plus is a free service with tons of free channels in categories like news, sports, and reality shows. While I love free, I hate to be the party pooper and say that I'm not a big fan of Samsung TV Plus either. And if you look for Samsung TV reviews online, most everyone else shares this opinion. And that's because as soon as you turn your TV on, Samsung TV Plus will automatically start playing. It just gets annoying. Thankfully, there's a way to disable it. Just find the icon on the home screen, long press the enter button, select remove, then disable. If you don't care to pay for streaming services, however, Samsung TV Plus is a great alternative. What I like about Tizen OS is ambient mode. Think of it as a collection of screensavers for your TV that uses low power. You can display one of these cinemagraphs, calming content, some useful information like world clocks displaying different time zones, or this dynamic filter. They work like widgets that change according to local time or weather. So saying it's snowing outside, it will display virtual snow. Ambient mode would look best when the TV is hung on a wall. That way, instead of a big black rectangle when it's off, you can display something more picturesque. Kind of like how it is on the Samsung Frame TV. Speaking of picturesque, Samsung's QN90C's picture quality is outstanding. It uses a mini LED panel, which results in a very bright display even when viewed at an angle. Contrast is pretty good and is probably as close as you get to a true OLED. In short, a lot of content just looks stunning. One thing to keep in mind though is it doesn't have support for Dolby Vision, which is a little bit disappointing because at least where I'm concerned, Dolby Vision is better than HDR10+. But that comes as no surprise as Samsung is one of the co-developers of HDR10+, a different standard for high dynamic range content. For most folks, I don't think this will be a deal breaker. And just in case you're wondering, here's the type of HDR content that different streaming services support. Anyway, back to picture quality. The new Avatar movie, The Way of the Water, looks as if everything was real. 
and not CGI. I also binged The Diplomat a few weeks ago, and while it's not the most visually stunning series out there, the Samsung QN90C delivered natural skin tones, but still with punchy colors. Also, watching Street Food Asia still makes me hungry and crave for all my favorite Thai and Korean food. Thankfully, I'm flying to Seoul later this month to cover the launch of Samsung's new foldable lineup. If you'd like to see those videos, make sure you're subscribed to get those videos that are dropping on July 26th. Last but not least, let's briefly talk about audio quality. I was pleasantly surprised at how loud and balanced the audio is on this TV. Watching on my own and do you hear the people sing scenes from Les Mis felt just as melancholic and powerful and chilling as I remembered when I saw it in a movie theater many years ago. By the way, Samantha Barks is a masterclass in that movie if you haven't seen it already. I highly recommend it. I live alone, so to me, the crisp and clear audio feels sufficient. Of course, if you want a more immersive cinematic surround sound, then a sound bar or a home theater system is always an option. If you've been following me on social media over the last few months, you'll know that I've been addicted to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which I coincidentally just finished today. The game doesn't have support for this TV's max refresh rate of 120 hertz. Regardless, it's one of those games you'd appreciate better on a big screen. And the first weekend I had this TV, the sun was out after months of cold winter and rainy weather, leaving me with a conundrum. Do I stay indoors to finish my game or do I go outside to enjoy the weather? I thought to myself, why not both? So I put on some sunscreen, changed into loungewear, sat down, and hit two birds with one stone. You see, Samsung recently sent me their latest 4K 65-inch QLED TV, and QLEDs are supposed to be really bright. How bright? Well, <laughs> it's a bright sunny day. Let's see if it will be able to give me bright pictures enough for me to play outdoors. Playing outside under the bright sun was a great test of how bright this screen gets, as well as its audio quality. And I must say it did an incredible job. The things we do for science, am I right? So is the 65 inch Samsung Neo QLED 4K QN90C your gadget match. If you're in the market for a new TV, I highly recommend the Samsung Neo QLED 4K QN90C. I think it offers excellent picture quality, plenty of connectivity options, and some extras, all at a reasonable price tag. It comes with the Gadget Match seal of approval. It starts at $1199.99 for the 43-inch model. The 65-inch model that I have is $2799.99. It's on the pricier end, I know, but depending on when you're watching this video, you could get it at a significant discount if you order from Samsung.com or Best Buy. Or as part of Amazon's Prime Day sale. The 65-inch model is currently listed at $300 off, while the 85-inch model goes for up to $1,000 off. Don't worry, I'll put all the links to all the discounts down below. And that was my Samsung Neo QLED QN90C review. If you're a fan of Samsung, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. We have Samsung Flip and Fold 5 coverage coming real soon. And make sure you hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post those videos. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And for news and updates, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.